Alrighty, I'll try and keep this short because it's pretty simple. A lot of people have been asking me about uh, how I claim to have farming sim working in virtual reality or VR. Uh, yes, it isn't true VR, it is a flat 2D experience. The main reason I do it is so that we can have head look, so that we can actually look around and you know, see behind us when we want to attach stuff and look up if we're loading high places, that sort of thing. Uh, we use a multitude of things, or a couple of different programs to get this working. And the first one that we use is Big Screen VR. This is a free program available through the Steam store and allows you to use a Steam VR compatible headset. So Windows Mixed Reality Index, HTC Vives, um, the Cosmos maybe. I don't know how it goes with Oculus because I haven't had a chance to try one of those, but if it works with Steam VR or if you can get Steam VR to work on it, then it should do the job. Uh, big Screen VR allows us to get a as its name says, big screen into the VR headset, which is based off the actual uh, game's main monitor. So if I switch over to the internal VR looking, oh, doing that again, uh, VR capture. Okay, and what we see here is that we are in a black void where we can't see anything. But because the screen is big enough, we can actually look around. So right now I'm staring at that pole directly in front of the center of the screen. Well, it's not really in the center of the screen, but it's the center of my field of vision as I look to the left and then vice versa. To me, that black monitor on the roof is now the center of my vision. There's enough uh, field of view left and right for me to be able to uh, still see things without my eyes going into the black border area. It's a bit harder with the up and down section because the 16 by 9 format, but you know, for the most part, it's just look, just for looking left and right. So once we have big screen VR getting the game into uh, the VR headset, we then use a program called OpenTrack, and this will take the uh, headset VR position data and turn it into a track IR compatible format so that farming sim will respond to the head moving around. It does have filtering options for smoothness and uh, how far it turns, so you can adjust that either up or down depending on the sensitivity that you like. Uh, someone did ask, does it support um, like uh, lateral position data? Yes, it does. If I move my chair back, we we'll actually move back in the seat, and I suppose if I move really close, we can move right in. Uh, I don't use it for that function so much because obviously when you're sitting with a wheel and a joystick you find a comfortable position and you don't need to move, but it is what it is, it supports it. And the other one to do is once the tracking data is active and you've got big screen running, you need to go into the properties of Farming Sim and actually disable uh, use desktop game theater while Steam VR is active. Let me just switch back to the desktop view again. I'm actually taking my headset off to do this because I have to scene switch in OBS. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we, where's my mouse? There it is. Uh, so yeah, we disable this option so that whilst we have big screen open, Steam doesn't try to launch its default theater to bring the game into the headset. Uh, it'll with this unticked, the game will just launch as a regular Pancake 2D game, which is what we're after. And that allows us to look around. So, to reiterate, this is not an actual depth 3D uh, viewpoint. It is still a Pancake game, just on a very big screen as compared to inside the headset. Uh, the visual fidelity is quite well. Uh, I can still read all the numbers and the text and that sort of thing, so you know, it's, it's not like it's too blurry or anything like that, and I've just got a basic HTC Vive. Uh, I don't know how other computers or graphics cards will handle higher resolution headsets like the Index or the Cosmos Elite, uh, but it is what it is. And the main reason for doing this, if it doesn't give me actual three-dimensional virtual reality, is just because it's nice and easy to sit with the headset on and just get immersed in the game because whilst you're driving around you'll be able to look through the intersections without having to move your mouse and that way you can keep your hands on the joystick and on the steering wheel or gear stick or any other control point device so yes if you play with a xbox controller say or a playstation controller 
uh, on PC, then yeah, you can still do this and you can still use a controller like you would normally. It's just a nice luxury to be able to look around and you know, uh, freely see things. So it's, it's just a bit more natural and it's more of a novelty than an actual function. Uh, there are some ways to try and get the game to render in a depth 3D. I believe there's Vorpex, uh, which is 50 something US dollars, up some sort of program to uh, virtualize three dimensional depth. There's also things like Reshade, which is a shader filter tool, which allows you to adjust the colors and actually attempt to set a depth 3D um, image, but I've had mixed success with that, so I tend not to use it because it does have a large performance impact. The frame rate in the world, well, I mean, I tend to keep it locked to the 60 hertz of my monitor, so it's not a full 90 FPS. Um, and that would also depend on the computer because, I mean, I'm running OBS, the tracking software, Steam VR, two games at once technically. Um, so my poor little i5 system can't quite keep up with it. But I hope that's answered most of the questions as to the how and the why. And uh, if anyone has any further questions, then by all means, post them in the comments. I'll see what I can do about answering them. And for that, I wish you a nice day and I'll leave you with that.